Hey everybody, Jay Brady here, Flat 6 Innovations, coming to you with a Flat 6 Minute. So I just wanted to take some time and go over a very odd failure of an M9603 cylinder head. Now M9603 would be found on your 2002 to 2004 996.2, that's your 3.6 liter engine. Now this is something that we only see with a base model Carrera, uh, of course, the X51 used a completely different cylinder head in, during that period of time, so we don't see this problem with the X51. This problem is something that is not widespread. However, it has come to find us several times in the past couple of years. First time we saw this one was about 10 years ago, and we actually ended up repairing a cylinder head that had a crack in it, and that crack actually went deeper than what we thought. And at that point, Lynn Hoffman, a Hoffman automotive machine, came up with a new way of pressure testing the cylinder heads. So the secondary chambers for the secondary air injection ports were going to also be part of the test for pressure testing the cylinder head and its coolant passages. Until then, we really hadn't seen this. So we got a lot of information out there about what happens to those earlier heads. We call it Y2K syndrome. They actually crack in a separate area and they have a separate set of symptoms. We're not gonna talk about that at all. We're gonna drop a link down for a video where we talk all about those cracks. And I'll also mention this crack in that other video, which was actually a Rencast from several months ago. And basically this particular failure gives a completely different symptom than what you find with those 3.4 liter and 3.2 liter engines and actually any other cracked head on any other M9X engine. Now the reason for that is because of where this crack forms, what it bridges together, and where the coolant actually escapes from. So this particular problem can lead to coolant out of the exhaust pipe. That can be liquid coolant, it can be steam, it can be both. Okay, because when this failure occurs inside the head, deep within the head, a crack forms and it bridges a cooling channel with the secondary air injection port. Now, since only the engines sold here in the States and Canada, not the ROW engines, had this same injection port, Basically, a lot of your ROW engines, or rest of the world engines, any engine that did not have secondary air injection, they weren't even drilled for this, okay? So this is something that if you guys are international, you're probably never gonna see this. Now, there could be some oddities where this crack forms inside the head and bridges something else, but I doubt it. We see ROW engines with our expansion of the engine program to go worldwide and all our new certified installers um, and super certified installers and the cores we're getting in for that program, we're seeing more and more of the ROW engines. So maybe we'll see one of those one of these days. At this point, this seems to be a US and Canada problem only. If you've got liquid coolant dripping out of your tailpipe, okay, you're going to probably have this failure or a cracked cylinder wall. That cracked cylinder wall will occur at the top of the water jacket and it will also create this. So it can be confusingly similar from a symptomatic perspective. Pretty easy to find that because you can do a bore scope in the spark plug hole and you will see coolant laying in that cylinder. That's a good way to catch that. Also, with this failure, it's difficult to pressure test ahead in a, a conventional manner and find this, okay? So if you perform a conventional pressure test of these cylinder heads, it is difficult to find this. You actually end up having to pressurize the secondary air injection side of things to find this. So it, this failure is something that a conventional pressure test is probably going to overlook. So if you've got a situation where coolant is dripping out of the tailpipe and you do not have a cracked cylinder, you're going to have this failure and you have to find it, okay? It's not gonna go away if you just take things apart and put it back together again. This can be elusive, it can be hard to find. So what I've done as part of my development here for my All About M9X Performance Engines, I have dissected and cut apart every cylinder head from every M96, M97 family of engines. That goes all the way from the 2.5 to the 997.1 X51. I've cut all of them apart. 
I have all the information about the internals. I've got the weak points. I've got everything for my book all about M9X performance engines because those specifications are going to be part of the book. These weaknesses, of course, are going to be part of the book as well because weaknesses have to be addressed if you expect to ever get performance. Otherwise, you turn up the volume on the thing and you break it. So now I'm going to spin you around here, show you this cylinder head, show you where this crack is, show you why it bridges what it bridges, and explain to you why this is irreparable. And if you have this problem, you just throw this head away. You truly cannot get deep enough in the head to repair this crack unless you were to cut the head in two pieces like what I've done. Okay, so this area is that I've circled here with Sharpie is basically the area where the crack forms. Now keep in mind, this is deep within the cylinder head, okay? You can see it a little bit better over here. This is the coolant passage, okay? This coolant passage has all of the charged coolant in it that would cool this combustion chamber. Now this crack can happen pretty much anywhere within these heads. It doesn't have to be located on a particular cylinder. And we really don't know what causes this one other than a casting defect is about the only thing that we can really figure out just based on how thin some of the material is that it's up underneath here. This, this material is exceptionally thin in this area. So basically in that scenario, you've got a situation where something happens and the engine doesn't really even have to overheat. But if it does overheat, it could certainly make this happen a lot easier. So I'm just going to take this uh, marker here and I'm actually going to just kind of give you an idea of what the flow path would be for this particular problem when you have coolant that, that comes out through this hole. So basically you got coolant all in this area here. This crack right here forms and it goes into this secondary air port here. Okay, now I'm going to grab the other piece and show you that it's just the same. Okay, because this is the same side of the coolant charge area right in here, and this crack is actually a little bit bigger, okay? And you can see this crack actually goes through the charge area and even extends down into this secondary airport, and then it goes across the rest of the casting, okay? It does not come out in this area. If it came out up here, you'd be able to see it visually, by doing a pressure test, or you'd be able to see it visually just as a crack, okay? Because this is the rocker box area, okay? Or valve cover area, as you can see. And a lot of times on the earlier heads, you can see cracks form in different places. You should always pressure test a head, even if you think that it's cracked, to make sure. Okay, so now we've got coolant that was previously here. And now it's traveled into this secondary airport. Now the volume of coolant that goes into the secondary airport is going to depend on how big the crack is and how, how hot the engine is. Because the hotter the engine is, the more this expands and the more it lets in there. Okay, That's why you can have a puddle, you can have a stream, or just vapors that come out of steam. Okay, So this secondary airport goes all the way up to the top of the head right here. Okay, So this is the on the intake side of things. So you can see that it basically goes all the way to this void right here, and there's a hole where this secondary airport starts, okay? So it goes the entire width of the head from the intake side of things all the way down to the exhaust port, okay? So what this is for is for secondary air injection. So when you have your smog pump, your secondary air injection pump comes on, airflow actually travels through this passage and goes down into your exhaust system. So now we're looking at this, when you look underneath your engine and you look at your exhaust system, you're looking at the bottom of these ports, okay? And your exhaust gasket actually has a relief in it that matches this channel because the exhaust gases and the secondary air injection gases, which are here, your ambient air is coming through here, mixing with exhaust air here for your secondary air to catalyze the process for your catalytic converters. That's how secondary air works. So basically you're trying to introduce some balanced out ambient air 
into the catalytic converters to catalyze the process of those catalytic converters lighting off and doing their job, okay? So at cold start, you have secondary air injection and you have higher fuel enrichment that makes your catalytic converters light off. The cam timing also changes to, to basically make that happen and so does the ignition timing. So at cold start, a lot of things are going on. So at cold start, you may see more and more of that coolant flow because you got air being pushed through here in a greater volume and everything is kind of advanced because the engine is trying to light off the catalytic converters, okay? Now, in some cases, your cats will do such a good job, they will keep the liquid from coming out. It will burn the liquid away in some cases or just have a, about a normal amount of liquid come out as condensation. In other cases, you're going to have a puddle of coolant come out and be underneath your muffler or pouring out of the tailpipe because basically you've got coolant coming through this crack, coming down through this major ambient secondary air charge area, getting into the exhaust system, and then dumping out through the muffler and the catalytic converter and tailpipe. Okay, that's how this works. So when this crack forms, basically this secondary air channel actually becomes a coolant flow path. It no longer just has air going through it. Okay, so that's a little bit about how this works, the short and simple flat six minute way. So if you've got this crack, if you've got this symptom and you have an M9603 engine being a 3.6, more than likely this is gonna be your problem. This is about the only place we've seen these cylinder heads really crack. They're completely different in the way that they fracture than the earlier cylinder heads as well as the later cylinder heads. All right, guys, hopefully that helped you understand this odd but somewhat common failure of a cracked secondary air port in your M9603 engine. If you have that coolant dumping underneath the exhaust system, if you've got steam coming out, it kind of has that sweet smell like coolant, then you want to investigate this. The first thing is check out those cylinders, run a bore scope in there, and make sure that you don't have a crack in the cylinder that's got coolant puddling in it. Now, keep in mind, if your exhaust system is stock and you haven't done something radical with the exhaust, your left bank cylinders for bank one through three are going to exhaust on the right side of the car. Your bank two cylinders, cylinders four, five, and six, are going to exhaust on the left side of the car. So whatever side of the engine has the problem, your exhaust system is going to exhibit the symptoms opposite of that. So if you've got something dripping out on the driver's side, then you want to investigate the passenger side of the engine, okay? People don't realize that and they bore scope the wrong thing, thinking that the muffler in the tailpipe exit on the same side of, the, of what that cylinder is, and that's not the case. All right, guys, I'll bring you more as we learn more. I've got a lot of stuff we're going to be bringing you guys in the future. We've really expanded our video library. We're going to be doing these more often. My book is almost there, trying to get to the publisher before March. That's been my goal. I'm pretty close. So Jake Radio, Flat Six Innovations, another Flat Six Minute Radio. Out.